Hey guys, welcome. Uh, I, I'm going to show you all a little 1, 2, 3D catch today and how to get that in the ZBrush. Um, this is something I've been using uh, out in California now. Um, we're taking it and deforming the 3D objects that we scan in from 1, 2, 3D catch. It's actually fantastic. And it's a really great way to get the real world into the digital. Um, and so here's the software. Um, as you see here, you can go to their website, 1, 2, 3D app.com slash catch you're going to need to make a Autodesk account and you're going to log in and then you can download the software um, one thing you really really need to realize is that the software itself degrades the photographs so there's no reason at all not to use the application on your iPhone you don't need to go get a high-res camera um, we a lot of our experiences was that the iPhone and the iPad app was actually better than a high in DSLR or whatever. I have a nice Olympus. Anyways, um, so take it with your iPhone, bring it in. Um, it's a little, you got to upload it to their website in order to get the, the model off of there. But once you get it off, it's, it's pretty easy. You just bring it into ZBrush like we're going to show you here. Um, also, for the application itself, if you go to YouTube right here and look at the the user of Autodesk 1, 2, 3D Catch. They have a lot of videos down here to help you get started using this more frequently. And this is best really for objects that um, are sitting on a table or something. I, we, we have a lot of success using newspaper as something because you, you have to, as you, I'll show you here in the actual software, you see these, these cameras um, all link to places it looks at. So it's looking at everything else in order to get this 3D model. Um, I always forget how to rotate around in here. Anyways, so you'll get a model in here like this. Uh, you can start to, I think you can cut, actually cut out a lot of this inside of 1, 2, 3D Catch. A lot of that's in the tutorials. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you want something that's stationary. You want something that that has something in the background where you can you can give a pinpoint to it. A white room will not work because it needs those points in space to analyze where it is. Anyways, so once you get out of here, I think think you, there's an export export capture as, and you can export out as an OBJ as you see right here. Don't worry about FBX. We're bringing in to ZBrush, so you need an OBJ. Anyway, so I've had one that I've already done before. Um, and also, one I'm at it, um, let's go over ZBrush a little bit. So in ZBrush, there's a really great application plugin that you, you'll need to download a little later. It's in the Pixelogic website in their download center. This GoZ, it, it's actually already built into the default uh, installation of ZBrush, as you see here, in 4R4. Anyhow, you should be good to go. Also, when you might also want to look at the decimator, ma uh, decimation master. This can really help your your model get brought down in size. You know. Anyways, so just look through all that. There's some great stuff on there. Also, the ZBrush Classroom. If you need anything to learn about, you know, digital sculpting or anything like that, that I'm not going over in this video. This is a really great area right here too. I'll repeat this at the the end of the tutorial. Anyhow, and Zebra, uh, of course, ZBrush Central, too, it's a great forum. Any questions and stuff you have about ZBrush, it's a great place to look. Anyhow, um, load up your ZBrush, as I have here. This is ZBrush 4.4 P2, which is an updated version. If anyone needs help with that, I mean, I, I don't think you need it. There's, there's actually a 5 now that's come out. So turn off your light box here. That's the little thing that drops down there. You have these really set models already. Anyways. So you go in here and you go to your tool menu, which is actually up here at the top, or it's default on the right here, and you'll go to import, to import your uh, 3D mesh, which is always going to be a, uh, OBJ. So go find your 3D mesh, mine is back here on my other drive, let's get to it real quick, um, mushroom. So we're going to import, we're going to import this one right here. Uh, yes, and it's going to say import mesh contains. These verses, would you guys remember? Yes, 
Okay. And so when you it, when you see it go into your thing there, go into this area right here and pull the model in like this. If you hold down shift, it will kind of lock it in place. Okay. So as immediately as when you do this, you can keep drawing and see these things aren't 3D. You can't do anything to them. So what you need to do, as this works with any OBJ, you want to bring it in and you want to be sure to go up here and hit edit, which is also T. So as you see now, it's a 3D model and it can be moved around. But as you can tell, we don't have our texture on top of the model. It's just using this plain texture over here. So the first thing we have to do is we got to load in that texture. And over here in the same menu of the tools is the texture map menu. And you want to hit you want to hit the square right here. And you see here comes all the text. Okay, yeah, so I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to figure out how to do this again. Anyways, um so again you'll you'll bring your model in, import, bring the uh like my mushroom in this case, you'll bring it in right here. Drag it to the top, and you might you make sure you hit edit. You might have had your material in the red. If you go over here and switch it to like a a basic material, it'll give you that gray look. And it's really optimal for putting these um, textures on. Anyhow, so you'll go in here and you'll go down to the texture map like I just showed you. Um, first, you're going to have to make sure it's loaded in here. And you import in the thing right here. And then you go down here and you'll pick that texture. And as you see, it's not on there properly. You're like, oh man, it's, it's not where it's supposed to be. So what you have to go up here to do is you go to texture. And you, you uh, oh wait, first you got to pick the texture here. You gotta pick it over here. Right here. And then you go to texture and see you see how it's up here in the corner? We want it down here in the other corner. So if we flip it and flip it and then pick it again. Oh it's still not on. So I flipped it too much. So you need to flip it back to the other side. And then we'll pick that again. And there it is. See, now it's perfectly on there. Now you can see that mushroom up the floor. You can get some of the, the rings underneath. You see that there? All right, so that's bringing it into ZBrush. Um, now, the way GoZ works, if you have GoZ loaded, I can click that right here. It's already installed. So now it's going to kick up. Hey, guys, I just I, I cut that off for a little short, but I just want to add a couple couple more things inside of ZBrush uh, that you can play around with. Um, we're not going to go in full detail. Maybe I'll kick out a tutorial a little later. Anyways, uh, a couple things you need to know. You can start manipulating things with the transposer right here to move, scale, and rotate. So this will scale your object. See, like this. You can start to manipulating this one. You can also rotate it, and the way it works is you drag it out, and then that's the pivot point right there. So you can rotate it around there. Um, you can also scale it that same way, like that, and the middle one, move it, you see. Alright, so that's the transposer. Kick it back to draw, and then also, also within this tool path or tool thing over here, you have your layers. You also have your deformation, and these can begin to rotate your guy, bending, you know, size. See, my favorite is a twist. So you can begin to twist him. Now, also, if you click, you see how it turns red there? So like if I click the twist, and you can type in at that point. So I can type in 50. So you can start getting precise stuff that way. You know, and you can start to make it a little parametric. Everything's a decision. It's always dead on. If you do it, it's there's no really going back except undo. So just realize that. That's kind of how ZBrush works. And that's what this little bar is too. Here's all your undos. You see? Anyways. Also, you have your brushes here. Your brushes are all kinds of things. Uh, you know, when the regular one works pretty good. If you hold down control, 
it turns the mask on. So see how it's masking there? And then see, it will not affect that area. And see, that's what the brush does there. And you see how it's really faceted? So um, the way to fix that is you go up here to geometry in the tool thing, and there's this divide button. you got to be careful not to divide it too much. The divide helps a lot, so see, we can divide it. And, you know, now as you see, it's a little better. Now I can divide it again. Oh, I have to turn, it needs, it needs to be a three out. Oh, you see, it's back on that guy now. So, yeah, you can see so you can go back and forth through the resolutions. And the way you can also adjust the size of your brush right here. You see here? Oh, and that happens a lot too. Nice crash. Anyways, so just a couple more things. We'll end this pretty shortly. Um, you can divide. As you can see, it divides up right there. Divide up a couple times. And you can see the mesh is a lot better. Don't worry about this. You can fix that later. I mean, if you need a 3D print, I'll show you how to do that later. Anyways, your brushes are up here. There's lots of them. They do lots of things. There's some really fun ones, like the rake here. And like I said, controls your mask. Control and Alt changes it to negative mask. Uh, shift is smooth. As you see, the brush changes to smooth up there. You can change your alphas in here. These will actually also affect your brush. As you see, that's like that. But if we have a different alpha in there, it's a little different. Um, a lot of this stuff is on the tutorials on the website. It's the best place to go for this. Um, you can change the stroke. I like doing this a lot. Uh, just be careful. As you see, when it starts to get like this, that's not workable. You don't want to use that mesh. You want to keep it very soft, so be very subtle with it. One thing um, you want to know is uh, you can mess with the intensity here. That can tend to really help that problem. You can see even right there, it's getting a little funky. So I would go in there and really like apply some logic to like how this this real object is and get it as close to what the mushroom or whatever object you're using was originally doing. You know, get in there. You can begin to paint too with it. You can go, um, yeah. Up here is the kind of paint stuff. You know, add a texture on there. Anyways, that's how you do that. And of course the deformations like I showed you earlier. Yeah, you can begin to just make sure you it doesn't start to get real noisy because then that model's not gonna work for you. And then you see you can always soften it up with this new tool. Anyhow, this has been really cool, guys. And I hope this helped a lot. And uh, I'll send another one John's way. And we'll keep this going. Anyways, guys, cheers. Uh, later.